Hi guys, I am Robin Gamble. I'm with the Napa Sanitation District. So you'll have to forgive me because I will be managing a clicker, managing a mic, and managing my paperwork. So hopefully you are kind to me. So I'm really, I'm gonna click through this just to make sure I got, there we go. I know how to work with a clicker, so that's helpful. Well, I thought I knew how to work it. So <laughs> thank you very much for joining us today. I'm really excited to speak with you all about the simplified approach that Napa Sanitation District took in order to implement our asset management program. I'm the asset management analyst. Um, I will be going through, uh, I will be going through what Napa San does as an agency. I'll be going through the process that we started for implementing the asset management program, and I will be giving you um, an update on where we're at with our program. So, what does Napa San do? Uh, we do wastewater collection. Um, we have about 37,000 connections, um, and in those connections, we have sewer main as well as uh, street laterals. We have our treatment plant um, and we have a dry weather flow of about six million gallons per day. That includes our plant as well as three lift stations. We have a uh, recycled water program. We have a recycled water production capacity of about 3,700 acre feet annually and that number is six months of recycling the uh, six million gallons per day coming in. We have a biosolids application program as well, and we, um, we do application of biosolids to district-owned lands. Um, we do development review for sanitary sewer and recycled water, as well as um, fog applications for developments within the city of Napa, as well as in Napa County. And we do um, environmental compliance reviews for those folks that are connected to us. So the turning point um, for asset management for our agency was really um, a board level decision. And so we did a strategic plan. And in 2017, we had goal number one for infrastructure reliability to be to continue implementation of an asset management program. So the board recognized that asset, ma asset management uh, would result in better prioritizations of projects and that the, there would be re reduced costs by predicting the most effective way for us to manage our assets. So that was a wonderful thing to have it at the top level. The message coming down from the top was the the reliability and prioritization and monetary um, needs need to be prioritized for our agency. So how did we get where we want to be? Well, we created an asset management position, that's me. And that position is under technical services for our agency. This is because um, we are implementing the program primarily um, at, at internally. So we do have some external help from consultants, but primarily this is a staff driven program. And so the agency wanted an individual that had a very technical background. So we ex uh, selected an experienced consultant team to evaluate our baseline for asset management. So through the RFP process, we selected GHG to do an asset management plan. And then we assembled an asset management team. So I think this is a really important step here is that you, if you don't have a team and people that are identified to facilitate the program, then it makes it much more difficult to get buy-in. And what we did with our agency is we have three directors. Um, so uh, on the team is our director of operations, our technical services director, our administrative services director, who handles all of our IT needs. 
they are all on the team. And this is really very helpful to get buy-in from all of the departments. Then also on the team is our collection system manager who is here at the back table, um, our collection system technician, our electrical maintenance supervisor who is also here as well as myself. So with that, um, GHG assisted us and we prepared um, an asset management plan and we did if anybody can you raise your hand if you have not yet done an asset management plan if your agency has not yet done a plan all right well i am talking to one person so <laughs> i'll be standing on this side of the room for the rest of the presentation <laughs> um so asset management plan it's a roadmap it is a long process guys it is a very long process you do workshops and it's exhausting in all honesty to um, sit down with the team you're taking away from your day in day out work in order to develop a plan but in the end you get what i'm showing here as a roadmap, and it's a phased approach to implementing the asset management program so uh, we got this phase approach or a roadmap and phase one we said we're going to refine existing um, asset management practices and replace our CMMS because we had, we actually have two CMMSs, one for linear assets and one for vertical. And then in between that, engineering and tech services also has a GIS system. So we're managing three databases, which is not efficient and there's room for error. So with that being said, um, this phase was going to develop systems and standards and practices. And then we we're going to move into phase two, which is preparing tactical asset management plans. We will do one for each of our areas, the collection system treatment plant, as well as recycled water and biosolids. Moving to phase three, optimizing data-driven decision-making, which include capital improvement planning, uh, maintenance planning, and then phase four would be Review, review and refine our asset management program. So basically, it, it, phase four is our check-in. Where are we at, where do we need to be? And we'd look at asset management policies and standards of practice. So then, um, we had our roadmap, and we asked GHD, please put some dollar amounts um, to those projects so we can analyze these. And so they came up with a roadmap for us and then put a budget together. I would like to call your attention to something that we felt was unique to our agency is that initially these, plan, or these plans are typically a four year um, program and we looked at the four year expense and the internal external costs as well as the total cost and then the annual costs, and we said, wow, that's a lot of money over the next four years. So then we asked GHD to look at it in different time horizons. So they looked at a seven-year um, implementation plan as well, and a 10-year implementation plan. We took this time horizon to our board of directors, and they're the ones that get to decide the budget. So we said, board of directors, what do you want us to do? And ultimately, they selected seven-year implementation plan that you see here in the middle. It averages out to about 580000 thank you, $580,000 a year. So that was nice that we're able to say there's an average cost here. This is how much we anticipate spending annually. So then what happened next? Yikes, that was my face. That's my bit emoji. <laughs> because uh, as with my tech background and as an engineer, I was like, well, I know what's in phase one. How are we roughly going to accomplish the items in phase one in approximately two years? And how are we going to do this with the budgets? And so then we decided to break it down even further. So we broke it down into sub-phases, starting with phase one. Um, and what this really allows us to do is it allows staff 
to have accomplishable milestones through the phases, it's much easier to track um, when you have stuff dialed in with time horizons. So we've broken it down to subphases. And also um, the subphases align with our fiscal year. So it's easier for us to do check-ins with our board or with staff regarding budget. So the importance of uh, phase one tasks. So our phase one tasks, we consider to be tasks that were necessary improvements uh, within our infrastructure. So uh, we are going to select and uh, purchase a new CMMS and we are actually through that process and we have selected one and we ultimately dis, uh, selected a GIS-centric uh, program so that we can have, you guys, this is exciting, one database instead of three. So that was very exciting. We're developing asset management protocols, developing register format formatting, which is all part of this MMS process, and um, we're, we are um, going to create an interface in the interim between our GIS database and our CMMSs. Phase 1B is very simple. You can see it's in the next fiscal year. It's just the formatting and implementation of our new CMMS. And then phase 1C is planning tests and preparation for phase 2 items. Um, this includes business risk exposure or doing the cost of, uh, business risk exposure tables um, for preparation of our phase two um, tactical asset management plans, and then formalization of our charters and business case evaluations. So our agency does charters for all of our CIP projects, which is basically before we can do any project, we write what the scope of work is, and we evaluate each project. Um, and. Uh, we have a form that we use, and it's pretty important because there's things like, will you need a CEQA document? Um, then other land use items like, will you be near an airport or will you be near a railroad? So we are more so formalizing that and then um, developing levels of service and performance measures. So then, we, as I said, we broke down the task one into subtasks. Uh, as you can see, uh, with the fiscal year, we have task 1B and task 1C in the same fiscal year. It's something um, that could be managed together. And when we put this format together, what we were able to do is see that with these phases, we were able to set it up where we were ensuring that we were staying within our budgetary limits that we had expressed to our board. Even though it was an average, it's nice to be able to say, we're doing something and we anticipate it's gonna be within our annual expected budget. So how is the program going so far? Well, since I'm the implementer of the program, I think it's going great. <laughs> So here we have a timeline um, breakdown of um, where we're at. Some of these tasks, P2 is not done until, we're not starting that until uh, phase one uh, B and C, as well as SS2. Um, so what we have here is um, kind of a, a tracking system for myself. I'm able to come in and, regarding the milestones, track where we're at and um, make a decision whether or not we need to advance some things. As you can see, we are behind slightly in some areas, but we're ahead in other areas. So that's good. Um, we're at the end of the fiscal year, so one would hope we would be further along um, in this category. However, I'm satisfied with it because we've gone, we're, we're accelerating in another category. So with that, um, are there any questions on NAPASAN's approach to implementing a simplified asset management program? Hi. Hello. You hear me? Hi. My name is Amaris. I'm with the San Francisco Community Committee's 
Commission. Um, to mention that you have three databases right now, and you both have one, just like everybody else here. Um, and my question was, you mentioned that you guys are purchasing a new CMN, CMNS system, and also you're gonna go to a centralized JS. Have you decided what your database of record is gonna be? Our database of record? Are you gonna, you know, that's one decision that you're kinda of like oh, also going through, you're gonna start GIS? Yeah. Start yeah, so it's going to be GIS, okay. yes. And we'll have a published database and then kind of like the working database. Thank, Thank you. you. And just also uh, the GIS-centric CMMS we've gone with CityWorks. So we haven't formalized the level of service um, process. It's kind of informal at this point. We know what it is and where it needs to be, but it's more informal and what we're doing here, um, we're gonna more so formalize it. Um, and so, I'm just, so levels of service um, that comes in, I'm just checking my notes real quick. Um, at the at the and basically the next phase, the next fiscal year, and that will help us with uh, the development of the tactical asset management plan. All oh, right, can I share your mic? I'm sorry. So I'm Brenda Don with the City and County of San Francisco. I have a couple of questions. One is, were you hired on as an asset management person new, or were you already? in a position, and then the other one is, do you have a vague idea of what percentage of total budget asset management could take up? So, um, I was an internal hire um, for, the position was created, um, and I was an internal candidate. Um, had I not applied, they likely would have gone out at large. I was um, already one of the engineers on staff and have worked for Napa Sand for uh, 12 years prior to taking the position. Um, regarding the budget, as you can see with our format and our approach, it really depends on the time horizon that you're looking at implementing <laughs> the project. Um, one of the things that our consultant said when presenting um, to our board was that asset management isn't necessarily cost savings per se, it's giving staff the tools to be able to make the right decisions at the right time. As an example, instead of us rehabilitating a sewer main um, that we have a hunch needs to be replaced, it does need to be replaced, but maybe we replace it five years from now and then we're able to find an asset that is more critical in worse condition and, and rehabilitate that first. So that's really, what the programs are about. One thing that I didn't mention is that these phase one tasks for Napa Sand, they're all items that we probably, we needed to do anyways. So they're very high, the high level of importance for our agency. So what that means for us is that um, we can adjust the plan at any time. If we get more budget or have less budget, we can expand out our time horizon because we already have the plan in place. So regarding the percentage, it's basically, um, it depends on what your baseline is for your agency and where you wanna go and what you need to do. It's actually more of an implementation question than a plan question. But it sounds like um, you all are starting in a similar position to where we're at, which is you have an existing asset management system that may or may not be complete, and you want to move to a obviously a complete asset management system and implement all the maintenance tasks that go along with it. The question that I have is, have you worked out who's going to do the asset verification? In other words, going and making sure that you're new asset management system is actually complete, that it not only contains everything from the old system, but make sure you capture whatever isn't in there. Were you planning on consulting that work out or contracting it out, or are you gonna have internal forces do it? So, for us, 
that is down here and we're sharing. We're gonna share in the responsibilities. So we do have a consultant that's assisting with the implementation. Um, however, there will be, uh, regarding the linear assets, we at staff level are doing all the verification. Um, and then we'll go beyond, uh, at some point beyond that and have staff then kind of transition and do verification for the vertical assets. But we are getting um, some assistance from a consultant regarding that.